Now let's make two things clear. ISIL is not Islamic, and ISIL is certainly not a state. President Obama addressed the nation with a plan to destroy the so-called Islamic State, a group that's terrorized civilians in Syria and Iraq. But the shocking videos of two American journalists being beheaded raise new questions about the threat they pose to the American homeland. My fellow Americans. It was a remarkable moment for a reluctant warrior. Tonight, with a new Iraqi government in place and following consultations with allies abroad and Congress at home, I can announce that America will lead a broad coalition to roll back this terrorist threat. On the eve of 9-11, President Obama announcing a new offensive on Islamic extremists in Iraq and in Syria. Now, let's take a look at those pictures from Obama's presidential address earlier this week. Tell me what you see. This was not photoshopped, by the way. These images have appeared on Fox News, Slate, Business Insider, and the National Review, and they are now going viral. And it is a chilling photo of what appears to be devil horns on Obama's head during his last presidential address. He's got horns coming out of the side and on top of his head. It almost looks deliberate. Standing tall and completely unashamed, something straight from the underworld, now exposed for Vancouver to see. It's pretty crazy. I guess nobody has any idea where it came from or, or what it's for. Satan standing where a statue of Christopher Columbus once stood, right off the SkyTrain line for thousands to see. A satanic black mass is scheduled for next month, and now the Catholic Archbishop of Oklahoma City is suing to stop it. Black mass that will take place here in the basement of the Civic Center. Now today, the Archbishop of Oklahoma City took a different type of action, filing a lawsuit. But the leader of the devil-worshipping devil organization tells us that he is not backing down. The Satanic Temple in Orange County, Florida, is planning to hand out Satanic children activity books at some schools. That is in response to the school district allowing a Christian group to give out Bibles. It's controversial. I mean, there's no way around it. I mean, that's the idea of Satan has always been. We're here to, to um, educate and be involved in our community and not to, not to create stereotypes. Tonight, a Whitehall woman was surprised when her property manager left her a note last week telling her to take down her flag. Julia Lees has flown a flag outside of her townhome at the Eden of Whitehall community for 36 years. But August 20th, this retired Franklin County Sheriff deputy received a notice from her property management team telling her that Old Glory needs to be taken down. This represents my country. This is my country. God gave us this country. I never gave it in a thought in my life that there would ever be a time in this country where you couldn't fly the American flag. The management office at the complex says they won't find this grandma, but they will give her one more written warning before they take her stars and stripes for good. And this seems to fit right in with the string of flag controversies we've seen making the news. In June, a Marine veteran in Virginia was told to take down the flag outside his condo. Management said it could only be flown during a holiday, a policy his condominium later revised. This is the American flag. This is the freedom of speech. In August, a Georgia Women's Homeowners Association told her she had to take down her American and Israeli flag. The HOA said the flags were unapproved. She says the flags have been up for about two years and believes a neighbor has now complained. A flag flap in Umatilla after hundreds of American flags placed on the graves of veterans were tossed in a dumpster. The move has outraged many veterans who want answers from the city. Flying high over the Glendale Cemetery in Umatilla is the American flag, a symbol veterans say of honor, respect and freedom. For over a decade, American Legion commander and Vietnam vet Carl Ludeke has been coming to this cemetery every Veterans Day, planting American flags on the graves of soldiers. But that honor was taken away when Ludeke noticed hundreds of flags went missing. The Legion later learned they'd been tossed in a dumpster. Jamie Rivord was court ordered to volunteer at the cemetery. He says a city maintenance employee in charge of upkeep at the cemetery ordered him to toss 200 American flags in a dumpster. I didn't feel right about it. You know, I'm just throwing an American flag away. That's not right. To visit his daughter's high school. Now the school district is under fire trying to explain why his uniform wasn't welcome on campus. The lieutenant colonel got anything but a welcoming treat. He came to Rochester Adams High School to speak with counselors about his daughter's class schedule, but he couldn't even get inside. Before he was allowed in, the security guard stopped him and said, sorry, you're not allowed in the school. And the security guard told him that men and women in uniform weren't allowed because it may offend another student. By not one, but four different people. I can't believe they would even think like that after all they do for our country. It's crazy. With children who go to this school and also just people who live in the area appalled that this has happened. 
Controversy brewing in the western suburbs over public workers' rights to show their patriotism. With the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks coming later this week, four Maywood firefighters have been relieved of their duties for refusing to remove American flags from their lockers and helmets, and there could be more. Firefighters tell me the tension actually started with the chief ordering an American flag be removed from the inside of Fire Station 2, a new flag the firefighters had bought with their own money to replace the tattered one that had been there for three years. When they weren't told why, firefighters put American flags on their lockers. Then came the memo saying all decals and stickers, including flags and military stickers, be removed from lockers and helmets, no questions asked. When David Flowers Jr., the union president, wouldn't take down the Marine decal on his locker, the same locker that was his father's, a Maywood firefighter and Vietnam vet, he was relieved of duty, sent home. Uh, this weekend, right, Gavin, the, uh, the rodeo is this weekend? Yeah, Sunday, there's a rodeo on television, okay? And so, you know, the, it's a big event. And so one network decided to air at CBS, and a lot of people are paying advertising to put their commercials on during this big rodeo. One company, a real estate company, decided to run this ad. It was so offensive, it got pulled off the air. Watch. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, full liberty and justice for all. Windermere Real Estate Tri-Cities, Kennewick, Washington. If you find that offensive, you are totally out of touch How is, with the rest of the country. No, you know what they should have done? That. They should have bleeped out the under God part. Then it would have been fine. Then <laughs> well, they could have aired it. It wasn't even that part that the network found offensive. CBS said that it was too political. Now, the phrase is only four words, but it has a lot of people talking. The final phrase of an airman's oath is now optional. Now, this comes after an airman took the words, so help me God, out of his oath during a ceremony at a Nevada air base. The sense of patriotism. I love this country, and, and so those feelings were paramount. But immediately, and as strong as those feelings were, was the fact that, that I believe I'm a Christian, and I believe that this country lives under the blessings of the Almighty. The retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel still lives by the words, so help me God. Varner says those words shouldn't be optional in the oath. I think it's a major mistake that the military will no longer uh, recognize that we do our duty, that we defend the Constitution of the United States because we have a belief in, in the Almighty. And I think it's a sad thing to take that away. Just after the Korean War. Joseph Peterson says the Navy taught him about God and country. It took God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. We are seeing a new world order being built in the early 21st century. The, the United States of America has some responsibility to help lead that. We can't dictate that order, uh, nor can any country, but, but we can help shape it. We face an evolving potential terrorist threat to the homeland and to the region. We would be in a state of denial if we did not say with what's going on internationally that the risk of a threat to us has increased. Governors Andrew Cuomo and Chris Christie and Mayor de Blasio want to ramp up their own war on terror. Australia is targeting ISIS this morning with its largest counterterrorism raid in history. More than 800 police officers arrested 15 people in Brisbane. Prime Minister Tony Abbott says ISIS planned to behead a random member of the public. The country is currently at high alert for a terrorist attack. Russia has denied it ever sent any military forces into Ukraine. In another development, the Russian Navy test launched a new intercontinental ballistic missile. It's capable of holding up to 10 nuclear warheads. This fight against Ebola, which as of today became a military matter. As we set up to 3,000 American military personnel will be deployed into this hot zone in Africa. All of it to combat an outbreak the World Health Organization called today, quote, unparalleled in modern times. The images from West Africa are searing. Children alone in the streets, men collapsed and left to die. With Ebola now spiraling beyond a health crisis and into a global security threat, President Obama said yeah, the United States must do more. Ebola is now an epidemic. Uh, of the likes that we have not seen before. But this is an infectious hot zone. That is unprecedented. And I can't remember a time when we sent troops to do this particular mission. The virus is spreading much faster than efforts to contain it. Now, there are nearly 5,000 cases in five African countries. The president also said last night that a big part of his strategy is protecting Americans at home. The man in charge of that is Jay Johnson, Secretary of Homeland Security. In many respects, the terrorist threat that we face today is more complex. One of my priorities as secretary is community outreach to establish a community-based type of homeland security and in, 
and it's worked with um, considerable success in some contexts, but we need to do a better job. It's a program that still sounds futuristic, even today. The FBI announced its facial recognition program is finally up and running, and it has some privacy advocates a little concerned. The FBI plans to eventually roll out more parts of its new NGI system, including voice and iris identification. You may consider lining up for hours at the Apple Store to get your hands on the new iPhone 6, but would you insert a chip in one of those hands to use the device? Ben Slater, a self-confessed tech enthusiast from Australia, planted a microchip in his hand in the hope that the new iPhone 6 will be able to read it. He is already able to use the device to access information databases and he can open his front door and turn on the lights without touching a thing. Currently the iPhone can't read microchip implants but Slater is hoping the new version will be able to. The Bay Area about to become the center of the law enforcement world. Officers from all over are going to take part in what's called Urban Shield. Law enforcement agencies from uh, around the world are convening right here in the Bay Area for a five-day Urban Shield event. Luckily, this is only a test. Today begins the 8th annual Urban Shield, a training exercise and trade show for law enforcement officers. But the criticism now is about the militarization of local police forces. It's a flashpoint in the wake of violent images from Ferguson, Missouri, and something local officers have taken heat about as well after events like Occupy Oakland. Well, Urban Shield is an effort to further militarize police departments in Alameda County, and it's something we certainly don't need. That's Oakland civil rights lawyer and mayoral candidate Dan Siegel, current mayor Gene Juan didn't want to address the issue and walked away. I'm just asking you a question about a major event that's going on in the city right now. Yeah. Controversial arrest. An officer caught on video punching a man several times. Now the city's top cop demands change. It's these few seconds of surveillance video that could cost the Baltimore City Police Department millions. I was shocked. I'm outraged. I'm disgusted. The video shows Colin Trust in red and officer Vincent Kosum in a physical altercation after Trust's attorneys say the two exchanged words outside of a store on Greenmount and North Avenue. One man tells WJZ all the appeals for better relationships between citizens and cops falls on deaf ears. It's just crazy and I don't think that communities would want to associate with police officers due to those type of acts. The NYPD's 72nd precinct is investigating yet another case of police brutality. The video goes on to show an officer kicking a man being held down by at least four other officers as multiple members of the NYPD shove, hit, and threaten both vendors and bystanders.